Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for using the rectangle tool in Adobe Illustrator. The rectangle tool is located on the left toolbar, and you should be able to see it unless you've recently used one of the other basic shape tools. Any of these might be showing rounded rectangle tool, ellipse tool, polygon tool, star tool, or flare tool. Whichever icon is showing on your left toolbar, if you'll just click and hold down your mouse, you're going to get this little flyout menu and you can choose the rectangle tool. You can see what the cursor looks like when the rectangle tool is active. The keyboard shortcut for that is M. And once I have the tool active, all I have to do is click and drag, and in whatever direction I drag, Illustrator is going to create a rectangle. Now I'll delete this rectangle, and next I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and as I drag out, Illustrator is going to constrain the sides of the rectangle so that each side is the same length, and I end up with a square. Now let's delete that rectangle, and this time I'm going to hold down the Option key and drag, and Illustrator is dragging the rectangle from the place where I started. That's going to be the center of the rectangle. I can delete this one, and one more tip. If I want to create a square and I want to drag from the center out, let's start at the center of the artboard. I'm going to hold down the Shift key to make it a square, and I'm going to hold down the Option key to drag from the center out. And here I have a square that is centered exactly where I placed my cursor on the very center of the artboard. Now, delete that rectangle and let's recenter our artboard. It kind of jumped around here. Command zero. Now, if I want to create a specific size rectangle, once I have the rectangle tool active, all I need to do is click on the artboard and that opens the rectangle dialog box. Here I can type in the width. Let's type in 4 inches for the width, tab down, and type in 5 inches for the height, and then I'm going to press the return key. Illustrator creates a rectangle that's 4 by 5 inches, and it puts the top left anchor at the spot on my artboard that I clicked to actually open up the rectangle dialog box. I'm going to delete this rectangle. And one last thing here, if I want to create my rectangle to be a specific size and I know where I want it centered, I'm going to hold down the Option key this time and I'll click to open the rectangle dialog box. And let's make a 5 by 5 square this time. I'll type in 5 inches for the width and I'm going to leave the height 5 inches so I'll press return, and because I held down the option key when I clicked to open the dialog box, the rectangle is centered right where I clicked. Now let's take a look at the rectangle. Illustrator calls these live shapes, and that's because they can so easily be changed in several different ways. On this particular rectangle, you're seeing four anchor points and a center anchor point. If I get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and I click on one of the anchors, I can move and drag it wherever I want on the artboard, and I can do that with any one of these anchors or with my center point, which I'm going to place this back in the center of the artboard. But if I change one setting, I'll be able to add a lot more controls for this rectangle. And I do that by going up to View and I come down and click on Show Bounding Box. I'm going to do that, and you can instantly see that my rectangle has changed in appearance. Now, the keyboard shortcut for this is Shift-Command-B, and this is a keyboard shortcut worth remembering because you toggle the bounding box on and off by using that keyboard shortcut. And there are times where you're going to want it on, and there are times where it might be in your way, and you want to easily turn it off. Now with the bounding box turned on, we end up with eight sizing handles. I have one in each corner and one in the center of each side. And as I drag on any one of these, I'm able to change the side. I move the top up, I move the left to the left, and if I click on one of the corners, it's going to resize the rectangle. Now let's undo that. Keyboard shortcut Command Z, and we're just going to keep doing Command Z till we get back where we were with our square centered on the artboard. Now, if I want to change the scale of my rectangle but keep it a square, I'm going to hold the Shift key down and then pull from one of the corners. This doesn't work with the side handles, but it does work with the corners. And you can see that no matter where I drag, I still end up with a square. And I'm going to release my mouse. And with the bounding box turned on, you can also easily rotate your rectangle just 
hover next to one of the corners and you're going to see your cursor change to this little icon and you can begin to turn and drag and you see this little gray box that is following around as I move. This is showing you the degree of your rotation. And let's just undo that move, keyboard shortcut, command Z. If you want to change the size of your rectangle, there are a couple of different places to do that. You can either double click on one of these corner widgets and that opens the transform dialog box. And here you can change the properties of the rectangle right in this area. Or you can come to the properties panel and we're not going to use width and height here. These happen to be five inches right now. But let me show you what happens when I rotate. Those change, and yet I did not change the size of my rectangle. And that's because the width and the height here are correlated with the X and Y values of the rectangle. And we're not going to talk about X, Y values here. If you want to know more about the X, Y values, I have a video that shows you how to actually place your rectangle using the X, Y value. But let's go ahead and undo that move. Keyboard shortcut, Command Z. And we're going to click on this little ellipsis here. And this is where I go to change the size numerically. I can just highlight this and I can type in a number and press the enter key and that's going to make this six inches wide or I can press this ellipsis again and I can just scroll with my mouse. I'm scrolling to go wider or more narrow and I can scroll here to go higher or lower. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this back to five inches and click on the artboard to close that out. On the inside corners of our rectangle, we have corner widgets, and these allow us to round or to reshape our corners. Now, when all the widgets are selected, and this is what they look like when they're selected, I click on the widget and I drag, and all of the corners are going to change the same. If I want to change it back, I grab a widget and I drag back, and now they're all squared off again. If I want more control over the rounding and the shaping of my corners, I hold down the command key and I double click on one of these widgets. This is going to open the corners dialog box. Here I can change the shape of the corner. I can change the radius by just increasing or decreasing this value. And I can change the rounding value by clicking on the other icon and I just say OK. Now, once I've closed the dialog box, if I think I might want to change this corner to the rounded corner or the little indented one, I can hold down the option key and I can click. And each time I click, it's going to toggle between the three choices that I have. Or if I want to go back to the square corner, I just click on one of the handles and drag it back and I'm back to squared corners again. Now, if I want to change just one corner, I can do that as well. But I have to get the direct selection tool, which is keyboard shortcut A. And notice that as soon as I get the direct selection tool, those shaping handles have turned back into anchors. So what I do is I click on an anchor and that's going to select it. And when I drag down, I'm only going to be changing this one corner. And I can choose as many corners as I want. I can choose one and hold down the shift key and select this one here and select this one here. And I'm going to leave this one unselected. And so when I drag one of the handles, I end up with a shape like this because Illustrator is only rounding the corners that I had selected. If I want to go back to the squared edges, I just drag back and here we go again. Now to have the very most control all at once over my rectangle, I'm going to go back to the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll double click on one of the widgets. And this opens up this transform dialog box. And here I can change each individual corner, but if this little link is selected, which it is because it's highlighted, the change that I make to one is going to be made to all of them. So I'll come back and change this to zero and I'll deselect this. And now if I click on the top left bin, I'm going to change the top left corner. So I'll increase this size here and it automatically by default goes to the rounded corner type. Once I've changed the radius from zero, I can then come over and I can choose a different corner type. 
but I can't change the corner type from rounded until I've changed the radius. So if I change the corner first, and then I come change the radius, it's still gonna be rounded. I have to wait until I've changed the radius and then I can come over and choose a different corner style. I will close the transform dialog box and show you just the basics, which I'm sure you know. To change the fill color, you just come over to the appearance panel and click and whatever color you choose is going to be filled on the rectangle. And then to change the stroke color, you click on the icon next to stroke and you can change it as well. And you can increase the weight of it by increasing the value here. Then to change the opacity, just highlight here, and I'm gonna type in 50% and press enter, and I have an opacity of 50%. And you would think that I could just scroll up and down and accomplish the same thing, but when I scroll up to 100% and I click on the artboard, it doesn't make a change. So I actually have to type in 100% and then I'll press enter and I end up with this. Now I can make more changes to the rectangle by clicking on the little ellipsis here in this appearance area and this is going to open up the appearance panel. And here I have a representation of the object that is selected on my artboard. It's not going to show the shape of it but it is going to show me the stroke color and the weight and the fill color. I'm not going to go into everything that you can do with the appearance panel because that's a whole nother training video. What I am going to do is show you how you can add a second stroke to your rectangle. Now to do that, we come down to the bottom of the appearance panel and this little open square is the add new stroke icon. And when I click here, Illustrator has added a second stroke. Illustrator always adds any new item to the top of the list, so we know that this is the stroke that's been added. You don't notice anything on the artboard because it's the same color and the same weight as the one that it's on top of. But when we begin to change the properties of the stroke, then you're gonna see the difference. Now, because this stroke is on top of the other one, I'm gonna actually change the first stroke, which is underneath it, so you can see the changes. First, I'm gonna change the color, and we'll just twirl down here, and I'm gonna choose orange for the color, and I'm going to increase the size of the stroke, and look what's happening. I'll close this out and click on the artboard to deselect it. You can see that the stroke has been changed so that the green stroke, which is actually the second one, is centered on top of the first stroke. Now I'm gonna select this and come back, open the ellipsis again, and I can make even more changes to that stroke. If I don't wanna see the orange stroke on both sides of the green stroke, all I have to do is come over, click on the word stroke next to the orange stroke, and I change a line stroke. Right now it's centered on this other stroke. I can change it to a line strokes to the inside. It's gonna move the orange to the inside of my rectangle, or I can change it to the outside, and it's going to show the orange rectangle around the outside. And then I can come back and I can adjust the weight of this stroke to match up more closely with what I was hoping for here. And when I close this out and click on the artboard, you see that I have a nice new stroke around my rectangle. And the last thing is simply how do you move a rectangle when the bounding box is showing. You can't click on an anchor because these are sizing handles instead of anchors. And the answer is that you click anywhere on the rectangle that's not a sizing handle and it's not a corner widget. And you can move your rectangle wherever you want. The best way I know for you to take advantage of rectangles being live objects in Adobe Illustrator is to keep the bounding box showing and to understand what the handles and the widgets do and to memorize those keyboard shortcuts and use them. Once you do this and you practice, you're gonna find that the changes you make to your rectangles are gonna come fast and it's gonna increase your workflow. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned something new about the rectangle tool. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'm gonna ask you to do that right now while you're thinking about it. Just click on that subscribe button. That'll help me and it'll help you not miss any of my future tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.